Nowadays, businesses based in Southern Africa can send and receive their goods safely using the Lubito Corridor, the shortest and most inexpensive access route to the Atlantic Ocean. One of the most historical African railway lines is open to the international traffic. The shortest road to Southern and Central Africa. That was how the Bengala Lubitu Railway was announced 90 years ago, a project of major importance for the development of Southern and Central Africa. And it was no exaggeration. At the time, this new corridor would provide an economic route from the Belgian province of Katanga and the Copper Belt to the world markets, which greatly contributed to the fast industrial development of Angola and neighboring regions of Africa. On the 28th of November 1904, the Cromley steamboat anchored at the Ristinga do Lubitu, 13 meters off the beach. It was transporting building materials for one of the most daring engineering projects of the African continent. 1,348 kilometers of railway which crossed the rivers and meandered along cliff tops to connect the center of Africa to the rest of the world. At the time, Congo and Zambia had the largest copper deposits in Africa, and to enable the mineral to reach the large European industrial plants, a railway line connecting to the sea was indispensable, and the shortest route to the sea was through Angola. The railway line was financed by the Tanganyika concession, through what was perhaps one of the oldest public-private partnerships in Angola. In 1902, Portugal had given the English citizen Sir Robert Williams, manager and majority partner of the company, a 99-year concession to build a railway line and a deep water port that would connect Lubito Bay to Katanga on the eastern border of Angola. The preliminary work began in 1903 and progressed at a pace of little more than 6 kilometers a year, arriving in Katumbela in 1905 in Benguela in 1906 and Kubao in 1908. In 1911, the railway line reached Mont du Lepe, which was also the year in which the postal service using passenger trains, known as mail trains, began. In 1912, the work reached the center plateau, and the town of Wambu was officially inaugurated. This location was chosen as the base for the future railway center of the Bengala Railway, comprising general workshops, accommodation for staff, support services and special stations that could couple trains coming from the coast. The onset of the First World War in 1914 put a stop to the works, and the project only resumed in 1920. In 1924, the railway line reached BA, and in 1925, it crossed Valle do Quiva and the Kwanza River. And finally, in 1928, the Bengala Railway was completed, reaching the banks of the Loire River on the borders of Belgium Congo. On the 2nd of February 1929, the project was finalized by the Bengala Railway Company. And on the 10th of June 1931, the first copper load from Katanga reached the port of Lubitu. The Lubitu Corridor was completely open to the international railway operations and throughput increased year after year. In 1961, the railway reached its maximum transportation quantity, 3,507,125 tons. In 1968, the export of commodities from Angola was higher than the volume of imports, which was a trend that would continue in the following years. And in 1974, the Lubitu Corridor also transported minerals from Zambia to the world. While the initial idea of this project had been to allow fast, cheap and safe transport of products from the Southern Africa, the Lubitu Corridor quickly became a hub of development for the provinces of Southern and Inland Angola and the whole of the neighboring region. Development sped forward like a train traveling on rails. But in 1975, the railway traffic was halted because of the war. The Katanga mines were no longer reachable. Borders were closed and travel to inland Angola stopped during several decades of national and international instability. It was the time of the Cold War conflicts. 
the 28th of November 2001, the concession contract with the Tanganyika concession expired and the Bengala Railway was taken over by the Angolian state, which appropriated all assets, fixed and mobile material and also the huge material and financial losses caused by decades of conflict. The next year, peace was broken in Angola. The task of rebuilding the country began and allowed the free circulation of people and goods. Thanks to the political and economic security, the Angolan government could take the measures needed to relaunch and encourage the Lubitu Corridor by recovering and constructing new infrastructures for the Bengala Railway. After many years of destruction involving advances and setbacks for Angola, today, after 19 years of stability, Angola has managed to recover Bengala Railway and to reestablish the rail connection to the Sadek Railway Network in particular and the African Railway Network in general. Port of Lubitu again received trains with copper ore and manganese from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Currently, the Bengala Railway commercial operation comprises passenger trains, mixed trains, general cargo trains, and hydrocarbon cargo trains. The railway line is a boom for large and small businesses and has made a huge contribution to boosting small commercial enterprises among the local communities along the corridor. As well as its importance for the mineral sector, the Lubitu Corridor also provides a huge development opportunity for the agriculture and food industry segments as well as other businesses in the provinces crossed by the Lubitu Corridor. The railway line has been completely overhauled and technically improved. New bridges have been built and new carriages, wagons and engines have been acquired. Stations have been built and workshops recuperated. A fiber optic cable has been installed alongside the railway line from beginning to the end. And Angola created the Railway Training Institute in Wambu to enhance the railway's human resources. Port of Lubitu has been enlarged and modernized and the new terminal was also built solely for the export of bulk minerals in big bags and containers. It currently has 1,600 meters of mooring quay. Thanks to the favorable natural features of the bay, Port of Lubitu is considered one of the most stable, safe and maneuverable ports in Western Africa. It is open 365 days a year, with no stoppages caused by maritime phenomena or meteorological alteration, which other ports along the coast of the Atlantic and Indian Ocean are subjected to. The Bengala Railway connects to the Southern Africa Rail Network, which allows for increased mobility in the SADC region and the African Continental Free Trade Area. A $3 trillion giant with access to a market of 1.2 billion consumers, according to the African Development Bank. And the preliminary feasibility study is being carried out for the building of a railway connection to Zambia. High expectations are being generated of the opportunities provided by the Lubitu Corridor, both in Southern Africa and in intercontinental markets. Every country in Africa is now independent, with each one seeking to boost its economy. The railway seeks to increase mutual trade in the region and within the wider African continent and strengthen Africa's position as supply of goods to the world. Angola wants to increase operations in the Lubitu Corridor and will therefore open it up to the private sector. This will allow for trains to run more frequently in both directions, thereby enabling high flows of international goods to be transported, as well as domestic goods to circulate internally and be exported. Following recommendations made by the SADC Protocol for regional integration in the field of transport, the concession provided for the operations and maintenance of the railway infrastructure and rail freight transport operations along the Lubitu Corridor promises to be the previously lacking driving force behind boosting the economy of several countries 